Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we have a very interesting topic because as the summer months come to a close and we approach fall, we are getting to the very dreaded winter. As a very popular franchise once said that went south at the very last minute, winter is coming. So in today's video, I wanna tell you guys a basic care guide on what to do with your turtles and your animals when the winter months come, depending on where you are. In the country, this is based off the United States, but it can apply for other places as well, because we're gonna talk about general temperatures and a very basic guide on what to do with your animals when the cold gets here. But first, let's go inside. Now in the indoor realm, I first wanna tell you guys, as we take a look down here, that I have three little baby concentric terrapins left that are available that I posted to my Patreon. But if you guys are interested, please go ahead and I don't know, email me or DM me on Instagram or something like that. But also I'm giving away one of these little baby turtles. So if you wanna learn how you can win one of these little buggers, hit the link right up over here to learn all the rules and whatnot and make sure that you're actually eligible to win one. Is that everything? Yeah. Now turtle nerds, while we are here in the land of the indoors, we're gonna be talking about this is a very, very basic general guide, not a step-by-step -step how to brewmate your turtles. It's just what to do with your animals in the winter time. If you are looking for a full like brewmation guide on how to hibernate your turtles and whatnot, which I'm gonna reference a lot in this video, hit the link. I wanna say it's gonna be up over here and head over to that video where I discuss brewmation and how I do that for my turtles. I'll talk more about it later, but for now we're gonna be talking about if you're keeping your pets indoors. If winter time is coming and you have your turtles indoors, so long as you're heating the water, you have nothing to worry about. And literally just a water heater you can use, or even for tortoises or box turtles, so long as you have a heat lamp, your temperatures are probably not gonna go below 72 degrees in the winter time. Eh, maybe even like, like even high 60s. So long as it doesn't get below like high 60s in your house and you have supplemental heating. As we can see, I have a heat lamp right over there. I've got a heat lamp pretty much on all of these enclosures, especially this top one over here we can see that's 160 watts of heat so long as you're supplying that supplemental heat which is necessary for when you're keeping turtles indoors you're not going to have any issues come winter time it doesn't really matter because they're not exposed to any of the elements but some people keep their turtles indoors all year and they ask me what do i do in the winter Nothing, <laughs> there's nothing to do. You're not gonna be affected by, by the winter months or the seasons, like hey, your turtle's inside. And if they don't live outside, you don't do anything, they're fine. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these guys. I wanna explain something a little bit further. So take a look at what is in common with these little guys, that little baby spotted turtle, this little spotted turtle here, these little terrapins, one back there, should be one right there, and all of these little terrapins. The similarities are that, they're all babies. For animals that are this young, that are this small, I can keep them outside during the summer months, but once it comes to winter time, you're not gonna wanna brewmate or risk your turtle outside in temperatures under 65 degrees if your turtle's less than a year old. This is a super, super general rule of thumb though, and it's gonna be different depending on what kind of turtle you have, but like a very general rule of thumb, if your turtle's under four or five inches and is under a year old, there's no point in keeping them outside all year. I suppose we should go outside to talk about some of these things. Ah yes, the patio, oh, why are we zoomed in? Ah yes, the patio. Uh, this is where I was keeping some of my hatchling terrapins just because it was really nice and warm out, but now that we're approaching the fall weather, I brought them inside because it's getting too cool. You do not want to risk baby turtles outside when it's cold. They are way less robust and less able to handle like colder temperatures and they're more prone that's the word they're way more prone to getting infections or getting sick and it's just it's not worth the risk especially when they're small and they're babies you can make room inside for them there's no point in keeping them outside all year especially when they're young and small so for turtles less than a year old my suggestion i don't care what species they are bring them in if it's gonna get cold, bring them in. Now, as we take a look at young butternut over here, we need to consider if your turtle can even handle cold temperatures. Make sure you do plenty of research on the type of turtle that you're keeping. So some turtles that come from temperate zones that can handle the cold, we have almost all species of box turtles. We have sliders, painted turtles, map turtles, mud and musk turtles. They can all handle cold temperatures, but definitely do research on your animal so you know for certain. I know pink belly sidenecks are a very popular species that 
do not handle winters well. And by that I mean they die because they're from a tropical region. They do not do well in the cold. If your turtle is from a tropical region or a tropical place like, you know, fly river turtles or like I said, pink belly side neck turtles, maybe even Central American wood turtles, do people overwinter them? I don't, I'm not entirely sure. It just, you want to make sure that if your turtle is not cold tolerant to not put them out in the cold. So that's another thing, even an adult, any adult or any size of a species that does not do well in cold temperatures that is a non-tropical or a tropical species bring them in so next we're going to look at jelly and otis my spotted turtle and my chinese box turtle so we're going to go ahead and have a look see let's bring on out little jelly here we go okay so this here is jelly this is my spotted turtle they are from native from new jersey down to florida in vernal pools forests fresh, beautiful, clean water. Uh, anyway, spotted turtles can handle cold temperatures. This is a young adult male. But the thing is, Jelly has no girlfriends. His girlfriends are inside their under a year old, so they're still growing. So if I have no real reason to brewmate, which is to leave them out during the cold, um, this turtle can handle cold temperatures and cold nights. So I'm gonna keep him and Otis, the Chinese box turtle, I'm gonna keep them out until we really start getting cold. If it hits 50s and 60s at night, but it's still 70s and 80s during the day, I'm gonna keep them out until the daytime temperatures start dropping and the night times get below, like well below 60s consistently. At that point, I will go ahead and make them a little indoor enclosure and bring them inside. So even if your turtle is cold tolerant, you can keep them outside for longer periods of time, but bring them in Inside before the real brumation starts, before they really start hunkering down for the winter and before it really, really gets cold. So these include juvenile box turtles, uh, even adult box turtles, though it might be easier to leave them out all year. We'll talk about that in a moment. Young, uh, you know, spotted turtles, map turtles, your sliders, your painted turtles, you know, they can handle the cold, but yeah, if you don't want to go on full on brumating them, bring them in once the temperatures start getting consistently cold. So these guys will probably stay out for another month before I decide to bring them in. So here we're going to let this little fella go. There you go, Jelly. So that's for species that can handle the cold, but you don't want to fully brumate. You can leave them out when it starts to get chilly way longer than something like a pink belly side neck where they would start to, you know, really get cold and, and you would risk infections or them getting sick, but not full on brumation. As we come over here, a lot of people ask me, Dan, what the heck do you do for your turtles come winter time? And for everybody that's in the pond, the answer is nothing. For adult turtles, especially ones that you plan on breeding, sometimes the cold is actually very important in getting them to breed. In the fall and spring, my male terrapins get way more active and way more inclined to breed. Females, their internal cycles rely on a cold period. For people who live where it's too warm, for cold tolerant species some people will like take their spotted turtles and if they plan to breed them they'll have to like put them in their refrigerator for like a month to simulate a cold season terrapins are fairly similar they they definitely do better in my opinion having had a cool down period it triggers the males to breed and it triggers the females to lay now here's where things get interesting so in adult turtles that are cold tolerant that can handle it that you especially want to breed winter time and brumation is definitely going to be an option especially if you have an environment where they can handle it so in my case these terrapins will go to the bottom of this pond or they'll come up on the beach or go in the dirt and bury themselves for the cold season when the water starts to warm up they'll start to come out they'll start to get active again like nothing ever happened isn't that right miss flipper that is called brumation so i have all of my turtles all the ones in the pond i am going to brumate unless they have some type of problem that prevents them from doing so even the little yearling babies that bean had even though they're only a little bit over a year old i kind of think that they're more robust when they stay out all year there's one back over there one over here but they're not coming close for some reason those yearlings i'm i'm not really i'm not worried about i i'm gonna keep them out so this is a yearling well this is now a two-year-old animal that i let brumate last year at a year old and it's just i think a much healthier more robust larger better grown turtle because i let her brumate and here's that's crouton here's mochi 
I let her brumate as well, and I just feel like this is a stronger, healthier animal. She's got a much bigger head, way more robust, because I let her brumate. So I'm gonna do the same with those yearling bean babies. As for everyone else, a lot of people don't brumate their males just because it's not entirely necessary for them to breed. Males will always breed, just always because they're horny little buggers. But I like to, just because I don't bring them in unless there's a purpose. Like, unless I have a very specific point. So some turtles that I will be bringing inside, Mr. Urkel has, uh, he came out of brumation last year with a respiratory infection, and this year he came out. Here's one of the yearlings, one of the bean babies right here. So this is one of the animals that I will be brumating, just trying it out. But anyway, Mr. Urkel will be coming inside, and Mr. Pancake, because of his prolapse, some of those problem turtles that are susceptible to issues, I'm gonna bring inside. If there's no reason for me to bring them in, I don't like to bring them in. The spotted turtle will probably be fine, the box turtle will probably be fine, but eh, they it's very easy to take care of them. They literally just need a large, like, uh, tub, like one of those large concrete mixing tubs, and that's their indoor setup, and they do fine. For any of the terrapins, I would need, at minimum, a 110-gallon stock tank. And you guys can see, it's much easier to bring that indoors than keep that indoors. And yeah, that, that is your information for what I do with my turtles. Here's another bean baby in the winter time. I leave almost all of them because I know that they can handle it and I don't want to have to set something up inside for them. Simple as that. And one final example, guys, is my little red foot tortoise hatchling here. Where did you go? There you are. Hey, little booger. <laughs> Buried over there now. Anyway, my little red foot tortoise hatchling. She still needs a name, by the way. Please leave suggestions in the comments. That is a tropical species. I leave her out during the day, and at nighttime when it gets below 65 degrees, I bring that entire enclosure inside my house. Especially because it's a species I don't have a lot of experience with, and because it's a young animal, and easy to bring indoors. Why risk it? So anyways, guys, this is the point being, I do everything on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the literal individual. I can go through my turtles one by one and explain to you why or why I am or am not brumating them, but the decision is ultimately up to you. Err on the side of caution. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I'll see y'all in the next one.